Hi everyone, I'm going to be reading chapter 17 of Gangster Granny. Chapter 17, Planning the Heist. For the first time in his life, Ben skipped to school the following morning. Through his love of plumbing the previous night, he discovered that the Tower of London had a weakness. In the most impregnable building in the world, where some of the country's most dangerous criminals had been imprisoned and executed, had a fatal flaw. A large sewage pipe that led directly into the River Thames. The ancient tube would be his, and Granny's way in and out of the tower. It was quite a brilliant plan, and Ben's body couldn't hide the excitement of this amazing discovery. That's why he was skipping. Now he couldn't wait till Friday night when his mum and dad would once again pack him off to Granny's. Then he would be able to convince the old lady that together they really could steal the crown jewels. Ben would be bringing along the diagram of plumbing weekly of the Tower of London sewage system to show her. The two of them could stay up all night and work out every detail of the most daring robbery of all times. The problem was that was a fat whole week away. A whole week of lessons and teachers and homework stood between now and Friday night. However, Ben was determined to use a week at school wisely. In his IT lesson, he looked up the crown jewels and memorised every detail on the web page. In history, he asked his teacher questions about the Tower of London and exactly where the building Whereabouts in the building the jewels were kept? That would be the jewel house for fact fans. In geography, he found an atlas of the British Isles and pinpointed precisely where on the Thames the tower is situated. In Peahe, he didn't accidentally on purpose forget his kit like usual. Instead, he did extra press up so his arms would be strong enough to pull himself up a sewage pipe that led into the tower. In mass, he asked the teacher how many packets of rolls you could buy with £5 billion which was what the crown jewels were said to be worth. Rollos were Ben's absolute favourite sweeties. An answer to that is about 10 billion packets, or 24 billion actual Rollos. That's enough for a year at least, thought Ben. And Raj was sure to throw in a few extra packets for free. In his French class, Ben learned how to say, I don't know nothing about the theft of, how do you say, the crown jewels, but I'm a poor French peasant boy. And Casey needed to pretend that he was a poor French peasant boy in order to escape the scene of the crime. In Spanish, he learned to say, I know nothing about how you say the crown jewels. <clears throat> I am a poor Spanish peasant boy. And Casey needed to pretend that he was a poor Spanish peasant boy in order to escape the scene of the crime. In German, he learned to say, well, I'm sure you get the idea. In signs, Ben quizzed his teacher about how you might be able to penetrate bulletproof grass. Even if you got into the jewel house, removing the jewels was not going to be easy, as you were kept behind glass that was inches thick. In his art class, he made a detailed scale model of the Tower of London out of matches so he could role-play the daring robbery in miniature. In a week, flew, sorry, the week flew by and school had never been so much fun. Most importantly, for the first time in his life, Ben couldn't wait to spend time with his granny. By the end of the Friday afternoon, Ben had felt that all he had all the detail, all the data that he needed to put the dating plan into place. The story of the theft of the crown jewels would be on the TV for weeks, on every website, and emblazoned across every front page of every newspaper in every country in the world. However, no one, but no one, would suspect that the thieves were in fact a little old lady and an eleven-year-old boy. They were going to get away with the crime of the century. Thanks for listening. That's the end of the chapter. Bye.